these government agencies really need to get their butts into gear, because yesterday SpaceX fueled up its next fully integrated Starship on the launch pad, notching the last milestone on the path toward the second test flight of the towering completely reusable heavy lift vehicle. The prototype S25, which was stacked on the prototype Super Heavy Booster 9, was fueled up at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, a test known as a wet dress rehearsal. While the test does not include firing up the rocket's engines, it is a typical practice during development of a new liquid-fueled vehicle. A wet dress rehearsal is a routine test conducted before a rocket launch and is generally designed to simulate every aspect of a launch save for engine ignition and liftoff. Most importantly, that involves fully filling the rocket with propellant and passing all of the checks the same rocket would need to pass to be cleared for launch. For Starship, the largest rocket ever built, a full propellant load means filling both stages with an extraordinary approximately 5,000 tons of liquid oxygen and liquid metal methane propellant. SpaceX also needs to fill the rocket fast enough to keep that propellant super cool, which increases its density and overall performance. In fact, the Starship and Super Heavy were loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant today in a flight-like rehearsal ahead of launch, SpaceX announced on X. More than 10 million pounds of propellant! It always seems to be kind of hard to really put that into any useful perspective, but here's my go at it, and that is exactly over 4,500 metric tons. It's equivalent to eight Airbus A380s at max gross weight worth of propellant. Thick plumes of methane vented out from the rocket while coatings of frost formed on its surface. Notably, this is also the first WDR without running the prop load system of the orbital tank farm off of generators. The SpaceX team finished propellant loading of the first and second stage Starship at roughly 2.55 p.m. local and a couple of minutes later, venting from below the rocket revealed that team teams had also chilled the rocket's engines. Chilling the engines is another crucial step before launch, since the extremely cold propellants risk damaging them if the methane and liquid oxygen flow through them without preparation. SpaceX also tested the Super Heavy Booster's fire extinguishing system close to the half-hour mark after the tanks were filled with methane and liquid oxygen. This system is one of the most extensive upgrades to Starship after the first test flight in April. SpaceX also introduced several changes to the fire suppression system after multiple uncontrolled engine fires during the first Starship orbital test flight along with a new hot staging ring and engine upgrades. In the end, a marvelous finale to the day, an intriguing water deluge test. This time, the test featured an extra featured an extra storage tank and saw more water flow out to match the scale required to protect the launch pad from damage during a Starship launch. SpaceX had to follow a tedious process for its launch site to ensure rocket launch activity does not affect the ecosystem surrounding the launch pad. Cooling the pad and diverting the force of the engines away from the concrete and steel structures requires thousands of gallons of water, and even though this gets converted into steam, an excessive flow of water to the surrounding areas during the full life cycle of the Starship program should carry some risks to wildlife. While hardware challenges continue to trump paperwork, an FAA launch license is another significant hurdle standing between SpaceX and Starship's orbital launch debut. Vehicle is ready for the second test flight of a fully integrated Starship, pending regulatory approval, the company stressed. Musk, perhaps more than anyone, is hoping to see Starship take flight in the very near future. SpaceX has big plans for the vehicle, positioning it as a rocket for delivering people, cargo, and satellites to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and elsewhere in the solar system. More pressingly, the company would very much like to use Starship to deliver its second-generation Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit, as the Falcon 9 rocket is ill-suited for the task, requiring the company to produce smaller Gen 2 variants. NASA is also desperate for the two-stage mega rocket to succeed, as SpaceX is under contract with the space agency to develop Starship into two distinct Artemis lunar landers. The first of these missions, Artemis 3, is currently scheduled for 2025, which isn't too far from now. Putting Starship aside, SpaceX just inked a landmark deal to launch European navigation satellites. Specifically, the company has signed a contract to loft up to four of Europe's Galileo navigation satellites over two launches in 2024. The deal, which Elon Musk's company inked recently with the European Space Agency, calls for the Galileo satellites to launch atop Falcon 9 rockets from U.S. soil, the journal reported on Monday, October 23rd. Citing Javier Benedicto, ESA's Director of Navigation, the European Commission, 
the European Union's executive arm, along with EU member states, must still give final approval for the deal, the journal wrote. That is likely to happen before the end of the year, officials said. Galileo is Europe's equivalent of the United States Global Positioning System, or GPS, China's Beidou, or Russia's GLONASS, an orbiting network that allows users to know exactly where they are and helps them figure out where they're going. The Galileo satellites orbit Earth at an altitude of 23,222 kilometers, and 28 of the 700 kilogram spacecraft have been launched to date, all of them aboard either Europe's Ariane 5 rocket or the Russian-built Soyuz. But Europe ended most of its space cooperation with Russia after the nation invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. The Ariane 5 retired recently, and its successor, the Ariane 6, has yet to get off the ground after suffering a series of delays, so SpaceX was pretty much the only option remaining, European officials told the journal. The upcoming missions will mark the first time that SpaceX launches EU satellites carrying classified equipment and the first time in 15 years that Galileo spacecraft launched from a non-European territory. Territory. That has prompted the US and the EU to start talks on an agreement to protect classified information in the satellites, officials said, the journal wrote. Galileo became operational in 2016, though Europe continues to build out the constellation as the upcoming launches show. The network, which takes its name from the famed Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, currently consists of 23 operational satellites. In its final form, Galileo will feature 30 spacecraft. 24 active satellites, and 6 orbiting spares. And for our final piece of news today, the United Launch Alliance now plans to launch its first Vulcan Centaur rocket on Christmas Eve, carrying a commercial lunar lander. The company announced on October 24th the launch of the CERT-1 mission. The inaugural flight of the Vulcan Centaur is scheduled for December 24th from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The mission will carry Peregrine, a commercial robotic lunar lander developed by Astrobotic, as well as a payload from space memorial company Celestis that will remain attached to the rocket. In an interview with CNBC used to announce the launch date, Tori Bruno, chief executive of ULA, said the date is driven by the requirement of Peregrine. We're going to a part of the moon where they need very carefully controlled lighting conditions and they also have to stay in radio communication with the deep space network, he said. When you put the two together, we get just a few days every month. Bruno said there are launch opportunities on December 24th, 25th, and the 26th. If the launch does not take place on those days, there is a backup window in January, but Bruno did not state when in the month that would be. Preparations for the launch are on track. Bruno said final work on the Centaur is also in progress ahead of shipping it to the launch site, while some qualification testing is being completed in parallel. Both of those get done in November, he said. The Peregrine lander is already ready, a company executive said at the AIAA's Ascend conference on October 24th before the launch date announcement. We're waiting for the green light to ship to ULA, said Dan Hendrickson, vice president of business development. The debut of Vulcan has suffered years of delays, much of it linked to issues with the development of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines used in the rocket's first stage. Earlier this year, a mishap during testing of the Centaur upper stage prompted changes to the stage that delayed the launch from spring to the fourth quarter. Bruno said in the CNBC interview that he expects to perform several Vulcan launches in 2024, increasing the launch rate to meet the needs of customers like Amazon, whose Project Kuiper broadband constellation will launch in part on Vulcan. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support us even further, you can go ahead and click that link in the description box to head on over to our Patreon and become a patron so you can get access to exclusive content. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.